Hi, I'm Hamish Black and welcome to Writing On Games. So, you pick up an empty packet of cigarettes on the ground. On its own, it means nothing. Then you notice it's crumpled, suggesting it has been discarded carelessly, along with the used cigarettes littered around it. Except these don't look like regular cigarettes, there's something different about them, something sterile, futuristic. Then you realise you're in a space station, yep, futuristic makes sense. Specifically, you're in botany, but you're not in the botanist's living quarters. This is tucked away, behind a locked door, suggesting a desire to hide something, perhaps stress. Was Andrew's stress brought on by the current emergency befalling the crew, or does this come from a deeper issue with his family life before the cataclysm? Perhaps, in the back of your mind, you consider the thematic implications of sleekly redesigning something so toxic and unclean to make it easier to sell, regardless of the human cost. And then you remember that all these thoughts stem from an empty packet of cigarettes. All of this is to say that Tacoma is more about how you tell a story rather than the story itself. On its own, the game's overarching narrative isn't really anything to write home about. You're recovering data from a space station and in doing so, uncovering the story of a crew's escape following a collision which threatens their oxygen supply. Allusions to the dangers of unbridled capitalism and the human cost of automation abound. It's typical, dare I say mundane, sci-fi fare. No, instead, the beauty of this game lies in its ability to not only craft stories from seemingly minuscule details, the objects you pick up and flip around as you wander through this abandoned ship, but crucially to have you construct these stories yourself. Contrary to what you might think of a so-called walking simulator, this is perhaps one of the most deeply interactive stories I've experienced in a game in some time. How this works is that the larger story is never fully dictated to you. You're only seeing fragments of a timeline here, and they're often distorted. Transcripts of conversations are usually broken, giving you some information in order to guess at the general sentiment, but never enough to comprehend it entirely. You never see the faces of characters outside of static identity cards, and it's never explained why objects are placed where they are. They're just there. This is all narratively justified. Comms equipment has been damaged, signal is tenuous in space, but importantly, you are not part of this crew. You have been sent in after the fact. The role of the player character is inherently distanced from events, leaving them to take on the mantle of voyeuristic detective attempting to fill in the blanks which lines up with your intentions as a player. Through this obfuscation of detail, your natural curiosity to find out more, your problem solving skills honed through the mere act of playing games, is truly engaged. You draw upon your previous findings, as well as your own life experiences, to determine why an object is placed where it is, for example. Every object is another piece of the puzzle that helps you contextualise why a character would act the way they do, what this means in terms of their role within the crew, as well as what it says about the state of the world you're inhabiting, both spatially and temporally. Something as simple as the packet of cigarettes I mentioned at the start, or a line on the cover of a magazine suggesting a previous Elon Musk presidency gets you asking all sorts of questions about the events which might have led to the situation you now find yourself in, the economic models of company loyalty that support that situation, etc. The beauty of Tacoma's delivery is that it creates a cycle whereby you find an object which raises a question which leads you to try and find an answer which itself only leads to more questions. Very little is definitive here, and that's what's great about it. It allows for a perhaps surprising level of player expression. In many ways, it's the perfect example of Barth's death of the author, where the goal is not to decipher the ultimate meaning of a text, instead to attempt to disentangle the multiple possible meanings that stem from these small details you come across, and the ways in which these meanings interact and intersect with other potential meanings from other details. 
For example, it wasn't until my second playthrough that I discovered various instances of Sarah the Doctor frequently and comfortably thrashing Andrew the Botanist in various games. In one particular instance, Sarah's stance suggested a quiet reservation about continuing this futile competition, while Andrew's resolve quickly morphed into a sense of desperation in my head. As well as just being a funny character quirk however, it totally recontextualised other major events in the game for me, with Andrew's stubborn need to overcome potentially unconquerable situations entirely on his own even if outside help is offered, or Sarah's overwhelming anxiety that she might disappoint people even if the reality of the situation dictates that she must, lest her fellow crew members be placed in grave danger. Something as simple as a score in a notepad bore out into a crucial facet of my own reading of the text. Whether it's the intended reading doesn't matter. It deepened my connection to the story, enthralled me to look out for more details like it to further my understanding. And this is just one small example of so many that had a similar effect during my playtime. That's powerful, that's using the medium of games in order to allow true interactivity in storytelling, and that's something very few of its contemporaries come close to achieving. Hell, to go further into this notion of interactivity, if you choose to view your role as purely one of dispassionate data recovery, you can beat this game in 20 minutes. All it requires is for you to click on all the little boxes, to go into every room and wave your hand before skipping through the timeline. Sure, you miss out on the written story playing out in front of you, but that's not to say that you haven't told your own story, defined your own meaning through these actions. Quite the opposite actually, I would say that this is a valuable subversion of intended play. It almost turns this experience into a role playing game in the truest sense. Which is why it's disappointing that perhaps my one gripe with Tacoma is in its conclusion's failure to recognise any such player subversion. I'm not going to spoil any details here, but not only does the crew's story unfold in almost exactly the way you'd expect, tying everything up with a neat little bow, a final twist to proceedings places your character in a very defined role, completely undoing any tension generated by the previous ambiguity of their true allegiances, motives, or to what extent their activity is being monitored. More importantly, however, it robs you of your ability to interpret any of that, suggesting that there really is an intended way of reading this narrative. It's a frustrating full stop in place of what perhaps should have been a semicolon. Even with this in mind, however, there are still few developers telling stories like Fulbright. Their efforts may be lambasted by many for their perceived non-interactivity, but with Gone Home and now Tacoma under their belts, I struggle to think of many other bodies of work that have placed so much agency on me as a player in terms of telling stories. We often think of the best games as the ones that give us the most tactile control, that place us at the centre of a narrative universe. What games like Tacoma prove is that by distancing us from and limiting our understanding of events playing out in front of us, storytellers can play to the strengths of the medium, giving us something far more important than an exposition heavy story. The ability to define our own meaning from something as seemingly insignificant as a pack of cigarettes. So I hope you enjoyed my piece on Tacoma, if you did why not hit subscribe, click the little bell thingy, and check out the podcast in the description. If you feel like going the extra mile however, you can support the show directly via Patreon, like these wonderful folks currently on screen. As always, my patrons continue to make this show possible, as well as inspire me to push myself further all the time, for that I cannot thank you enough. In particular I'd like to thank Mark B. Writing. Spike Jones, Vasily Rabinka, Julian McRoth, Leonardo Paley, Samuel Pickens, Tom Nash, Shardfire, Philip Lange, Rob, Rusty Shackelford, Elsie Heinz, John Parks, Danny James, Mosh, Anna Pimentel, Gang Leader, Jesse Ryan, Brandon Robinson, Diego Fox Obuza, Justin's Holderness, 
James Doring, Biggie Smith, Artyom Vitsyuk, Christian Kuhneman, Nico Blakely, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. And with that, I'm Hamish Black, and this has been Writing on Games. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.